Hi everyone, it's Lauren and this is the second video in my Jane Eyre page to screen series. If you've not seen part one, um, you can go and look at it here. In part one I discuss all of the um, earlier adaptations of Jane Eyre, kind of from 1930s um, up until about the 80s, and this episode is going to be um, the four most recent Jane Eyre adaptations that I um, managed to watch from the 90s kind of onwards. So go and watch that video first if you haven't already. But we're going to start with a 1996 film starring Charlotte Gainsbourg and William Hurt. I was really looking forward to watching this adaptation because it has Charlotte Gainsbourg in it, um, Mrs Fairfax is played by um, Joan Plowright, so I thought this was going to be a really interesting cast um, and I was really looking forward to watching it. The interpretations of Jane and Rochester are really interesting in this version. Um, Rochester in a lot of earlier versions, which I hadn't noticed until I watched um, this film actually, is quite flamboyant and over the top in the way that he's um, witty and rude to everyone. And uh, William Hurt's a lot more subtle, he's less over the top and perhaps a little bit more realistic. And his humour's more dry and arch, um, which I actually quite enjoy. And I think it works really well opposite uh, Charlotte Gainsbourg's Jane because she's very very young um, in this adaptation, she really does look 18 to me. And her interpretation is quite quiet and solemn um, but she has this sort of sweetness and vulnerability about her and I think that works really well against Rochester um, not being so loud and over the top um, because he, otherwise I think he would overpower her. Although they work well as a pair they're not my favourite interpretation because I, I do feel like unless Jane has a little bit of spark and capability about her um, it can feel quite predatory because she is very young and um, obviously Rochester is looking for someone who's kind of innocent and, and pure, um, it, it, which is what he says later on, but you kind of want her to have something about her and you want her to be a match for him um, on an intellectual level. And when Jane is depicted as so quiet, um, I think you lose a little bit of that. So I'm not sure, um, I love their interpretations, but they did work well um, together. Something that I think is really interesting about these later versions is that they almost indefinitely change the plot and work with the plot um, because a lot of things in Jane Eyre work well as part of a book and they don't necessarily come across and work that well on a film, especially to a modern audience. And I'm kind of talking about um, the laughter that Jane hears, um, the kind of dreams that she has of Bertha walking around the house um, or people tell them tell her that they're dreams. And I think when depending on how that's handled in a film, it can come across quite strangely. Whereas in the book, because you have Jane narrating, um, you can kind of take it from her that that's what she's seeing and maybe it's a dream, maybe it's not, but you, you can kind of buy into what she's saying in the book. I think where this film kind of goes a little bit wrong is that where Mrs Fairfax is played by Jane Plowright and Jane Plowright is quite a famous actor, um, they give her a lot of airtime, and it, Mrs Fairfax becomes almost like the main character in a lot of ways, and not to say that she isn't a main character, but when laughter is heard or we have discussions with Grace Poole or any, anything like that, we get a lot of looks and we get a lot of foreshadowing and Joan Plowright being a bit but there shouldn't be too much mystery. Like, Jane shouldn't kind of worry for her life. Like, she should be able to accept the explanations that are given to her. And I think when you're watching this film, you kind of think, well, Jane, what's wrong with you? Don't believe Mrs Fairfax. Look, she's clearly lying. Um, so I think it's kind of, it's, it's a little bit too much and it's a little bit too dramatic in that sense. Although I do really see that um, when you're condensing a whole novel into a film, you are gonna have to change the plot. And that is fine, I'm, I'm down with um, varied interpretations as long as it in keeps with the tone of Jane Eyre. The problem I have with this film is that the way it changes things, changes the feel of the narration just too much. So when Rochester reveals Bertha, um, Jane runs away directly. We don't get a conversation where Rochester is like, oh no, stay with me, just stay with me anyway, it doesn't matter that I'm married. We don't have any of that, but as she runs away, Bertha sets a house on fire. So Rochester is pursuing Jane and then he has to make a decision because his house is on fire and his servants are um, in danger. So he has to kind of let her go and then go back for the fire and then it all, you, you see it all happening, you see, um, Bertha jump and that works well as part of the film because it kind of condenses a, a couple of different plot points into one scene but it means that the, the climax of the film is just completely changed and I for me although it it works cin cinematically I think it changes the mood of Jane Eyre too much so I think that's and I think that's a shame but it is a good film um, if, if, if you're not comparing it to Jane Eyre it has a beautiful score um, and very good acting but too, too many deviations um, in terms of the interpretations of the characters and also the plot itself. And the next version we have is from 1997 and that stars Samantha Morton and Kieran Hines. Um, this is a TV movie, I think. I think it's a made-for-TV movie. Um, so again, it's not that long um, and the plot does feel quite condensed and rushed, but despite that, um, this is probably my favourite.
over adaptation. I think the interpretations of Jane and Rochester and all of the characters really are just absolutely spot on and the changes that it does make to the plot um, it, for the sake of time I think work really well and kind of in keeps with what I believe Jane Eyre should be. Jane is quiet because she's a quiet character but she is strong and she doesn't come across as shy um, and she's more than a match for Rochester who is loud and brash and hilarious I think um, and it works really nicely uh, together. A decision that I think works really really well in this adaptation is the way that they frame the mystery with Grace Poole and the laughter that Jane hears. In all previous adaptations really um, the explanation that it's Grace Poole laughing just hasn't hasn't really felt like enough you always kind of think mm, is that what's happening something else is going on here what they do in this film is really paint Grace Poole as a drunkard I mean, Rochester talks about her as someone that he feels indebted to look after she's been with the family for years and yes she is crazy and she's drunk and you know but I just keep her upstairs where she's out of the way and Rochester paints it that he feels like he owes Grace Poole a living and that's why he keeps her and it works really really well because it does genuinely feel like Jane would believe that explanation um, and it doesn't feel too foreshadowy. Mrs Fairfax kind of brushes off the fire in Rochester Chamber. She's like, oh yeah, that, that was fine, don't be silly. And she, she just gets, gets on with it. And it works really well because it, I think Jane is almost questioning herself when she doesn't believe it. She sort of thinks there's something wrong, but she, she can't really find holes in any of these explanations and I think that works really really well. Something else that's done wonderfully is actually the fire in Rochester's chamber. I think that is a very difficult scene to get right because you have the anger and um, sort of surprise and frustration of, of, of everybody but then afterwards you have to have some real vulnerability in Rochester and you see kind of this overflow of emotions um, between them after they've been through this um, scary incident in the middle of the night and I think this uh, film balances all of those different things very 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 well and it, it just becomes very believable um, I think it's very difficult to get that a lot of the Rochesters seem either kind of too intense with Jane or too angry about what's happening or they're brushing off too much the energy in this scene is just spot on something that's also really interesting in this film is the way that Bertha is presented a lot of the other um, adaptations have Bertha living in this really nice room at the top of the at the top of the house and she's very very quiet and has walked around dreamily um, in this version Bertha is living in in squalor it is it's horrible it's really shocking to see there's mattresses all over the place and um dirty sheets everywhere like just stop her from hurting herself and she is just a complete state and Jane is like understandably really shocked and appalled by what's going on and it feels like a shock like as an, as the audience not just that he's got a wife but also it, it's horrible to see um the only thing that i really don't like about this adaptation is the actual depiction of bertha herself she's very very buxom she's got tons of hair everywhere and the kind of the way she's acting like to me it feels really <sighs> I, at best culturally insensitive and at worst like borderline racist I don't really like the way she's depicted at all I think it's really um it makes me feel really uncomfortable and I, that's such a shame because I I don't think they've given her enough dignity and enough personhood despite the fact that it, it's good the way her situation is presented um I think it just really detracts from from the overall film and, I, and that that is just a shame because for me this probably would have been the perfect adaptation um if I just didn't feel so uncomfortable with the way that Bertha is presented. The next adaptation is a tv series from 2007 starring Ruth Wilson and Toby Stevens. This is a really really interesting one because I think uh, Ruth Wilson's Jane is absolutely fantastic. She has a good level of kindness and humour and passion. You feel like she is in control of her own destiny and not just that the plot is pushing her forward which I really really like. Toby Stevens is very good although kind of a younger Rochester. This is the first uh, Rochester we get who's not seemingly kind of in his 40s and um, that's good in a way because I think it's nice to see a Rochester that, that isn't so much older than Jane but at the same time probably not that accurate. Um, but it, they work together as a pair and they have really some really nice dialogue and you really believe in their relationship. What's very odd about this adaptation is because it's about four um, hour long episodes um, and yet the weighting that's been given to certain scenes just feels very very strange. Jane's childhood is over in 20 minutes, we are straight away at Thornfield and it just feels very very rushed. Um, then you have a long long time spent at Thornfield um, and lots of conversations that are added lots of expansions on themes which aren't in the book which work is very in keeping with the tone of Jane Eyre 
but it's not what Charlotte Bronte wrote and it just feels a bit odd I don't know why you you'd feel the need to expand on stuff so much um, for example when the party of Blanche Ingram and all her friends are at um, Rochester's house they have this whole conversation about blood and bad blood and whether people are predestined to be good or bad and um, depending um, on the blood that they have their social status and stuff and that's an actually very very interesting conversation and it works very well when you um, frame it in terms of Jane's position compared to Rochester's but also um, what Rochester has done to Bertha and Bertha's madness and all this kind of stuff um, and yeah okay that works but it's not in the book so it just feels a bit strained and there's countless examples of that kind of thing um, in this adaptation and in some ways that works really nicely because it just colours in Jane's character a little bit, Roger's character and um, it really allows their relationship develop, to develop over a long period of time but it, <laughs> it's just so not the book so I don't know how I can I don't know how to feel about it. Like when Jane goes and finds St. John and Mary and Diana, um, it's really nice because their whole relationship is really fleshed out and Mary and Diana seem really nice and fun um, in a way that they often aren't in most of these adaptations, they're just people that are, happen to be in that house. Um, so when Jane finds out that they're related, you can it's, it's it's proper delight because she really likes these people and that's really nice and then, but then at the same time she's kind of told them that she's forgotten her, her memory and she can't remember who she is and there's all this dialogue that happens about her not remembering herself which isn't in the book and it, it does make sense it does make sense that she would tell them that um, rather than just say oh I don't have any friends or family like saying that she's forgotten who she is works really well but again it is it necessary to do that so I'm a bit conflicted with this adaptation because it is very very um, good it's very very watchable um, all of the characterizations are fantastic and the relationship with between Jane and Rochester which is what I really love I love their relationship that's my favorite thing about the story um, it is done very well um, but it's just it just kind of plays around with the plot a little bit too much for me to say that it's my favorite and finally we have the most recent film in 2011 starring Michael Fassbender and Mia Wasikowska this is a really, really beautiful film. It's beautifully shot. It has a wonderful score. Um, all of the acting is, is just brilliant. And it's a really, really nice film to watch. But what they've done is instead of changing bits, which a lot of other films do, they kind of change how scenes work or, or, or bungle a load of scenes together into one scene um, just to, for the sake of time. But what they do in this film is just take out everything that's superfluous so we don't have any laughter we don't really have grace pool um it's just very very the the bare minimum skin and bones of the story so you would only know that something's missing if you've read the book it doesn't feel like there's anything missing um but that that so that's how they get around the time issue again i'm not sure how i feel about this film the mood of it is very very uh, well realized i think you get a really proper sense of the quietness of um, of Thornfield without Mr. Rochester there, the loneliness and the waiting that Jane um, experiences, uh, I, I think comes across really, really well. And you do get a proper sense of when Mr. Rochester is there, it being an exciting thing and an interesting thing that's happened. And then when he goes away again, um, everything being very, very still. And that's that's nice, but it makes it a bit very brooding film. Um, and it does, for me, it does sit, kind of lose some of the passion and some of the intrigue. It kind of removes any element of the gothic really and it just becomes a very realistic naturalistic film um which which is fine but again it it just is basically half the book it's not the whole story what this film does do really well as opposed to the um charlotte gensberg version in 1926 um is that mrs fairfax is played by judy dench who again is a very very famous actress uh, but they don't change the, the role of mrs fairfax to suit the person that is playing her um she does have a couple of really funny one-liners and she is a really nice she's obviously an important part of jane's life um but she doesn't overshadow the plot she doesn't overshadow the relationship between jane and rochester um which i think is really important and it, it just works really well to a point where you're not distracted by the famous face you are just watching the film of Jane Eyre so that is done really well. Something that I think is really interesting looking back on all of these versions is that the most recent ones um, have have cast Rochester's who are very um, classically good looking or chiselled. I mean neither of them are like overly pretty they are quite ruggedly handsome but I don't, I don't know if that affects my enjoyment of the film um, whether um, I am kind of caught up in the romantic story um, more if the if the Rochester's are more young and attractive as opposed to being older men I mean it's, it's quite a 
it's kind of interesting the way that it's, it's gone in the last couple of years. So in summary, I don't really know how I feel. There's not really a one film or one um, TV series that I really, really think nails Jane Eyre, to be honest. From the more recent ones, I really, really enjoyed that TV um, movie with Samantha Morton, but there is just that niggling issue I have with the birther in that adapt adaptation. The 2007 TV series and the 2011 film, I think, are both good in their own way, um, but both of them kind of divert from Charlotte Bronte's story either by adding more stuff and padding it out or by getting rid of all the superfluous plot points I suppose. Um, so neither of them kind of properly um, hit exactly what I want from Jane Eyre for me. I think looking at all of the adaptations as a whole I still really enjoyed that 1943 uh, film noir version with um, Orson Welles and Joan Fontaine. I think that's a really good film in its own right and I think it captures the kind of gothic drama of Jane Eyre. I mean they're, they're, it's not perfect but I do really like it and I think my favourite Jane Rochester pairings are either those two or probably Samantha Morton and Kieran Hines. I really like them. Um, I think also Ruth Wilson and Toby Stevens, they are really good together as a, as a couple. So um, lots of good points about lots of these adaptations, but also not, not, not quite there. Personally, I've not found perfection. Um, I would love to hear from anyone in the comments who's, who's seen any of these adaptations um, and what your thoughts are on them. I think this has really allowed me to look into some of the kind of subtleties of Jane Eyre because when you see adaptations doing your favourite scene wrong or not what you want in your head, you can really appreciate um, some of the subtleties of the writing and the difficulties of getting it exactly right, I think. So it's been really interesting doing these videos. I hope that it's been interesting and enjoyable and I'll be seeing you in my next video. Bye! ...of what this is because this is one of the best and most um, realistic and believable characterizations of um, madness or you know mental mental health issues from the 19th century that I've ever read and it just really rings true I think a lot of the time um, illness in general really